Hi, my name is Jim Shea Chaudhry from Marketron, where I lead the product organization. I'm excited to have with me today Hadassah Gerber, the EVP and Chief Research Officer with the TVB. Hadassah, thank you for being with us today. Glad to be here. So we've got a couple of uh, interesting questions for you. You guys have been doing some great research over the last couple of months, a year, and I uh, wanted to ask your opinion on a couple of things and what the research has shown you. So the first topic is going to be around sports betting and advertising around that. It's a major trending topic with more and more places legalizing sports betting. You know, the advertising dollars are quickly following. And I know the TVB recently conducted a study in this category. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why you conducted the study and uh, what your approach was to collecting the data? Okay, so it's obviously uh, very important to local television broadcast, and um, that's one of the reasons that we did the study. So it, we the study focused on online sports betting. Sports betting is legal in 29 states and D.C., but not all of them um, allow the FanDuel's and the Draft Kings to uh, people there in those states to bet on them. And in fact, there are about 19 states that do allow that. So it definitely is local in its nature because it, it, it is not at a, a point where it's everywhere in the United States. And there are certain states like Texas and Utah, which seem to be at this point dead in the water, and Florida, which is politically uh, motivated uh, in different directions. So we went and we went into 13 states where online betting uh, is legal. And the sample was 1,500. They had to be age 21 and older because that's mostly legal betting starts at 21 and older in most states. And they had to be exposed to advertising or have seen in some way or heard for an online betting platform. And we covered over 20 different media platforms to get their sense of what was most important to them in different stages, the awareness, consideration, and actually placing the bet. And in doing so, I mean, we, uh, we have done other studies where we make sure that the sample is representative of census but this is sports betting. So th those were our criteria, online sports bettors. And what we found was about, uh, for the sample, two-thirds of them are men. Um, it skewed younger. And um, in addition, the, and this was a little bit surprising to me, it's not a rich man's necessarily sport. Because when you index the, the uh, income breaks to the population, we found that those that were in household incomes of 150 or more actually under-indexed. The real sweet spot is about 50 to 150 in income, household income. That's a little counterintuitive, don't you think? Um, I don't know that it's counterintuitive. It's, it's if you don't have to place a large bet in order to be part of sports betting, so maybe it lends itself to it. Is there anything else that surprised you? in the study? Uh, there, were, there were a couple of things besides that. So we also asked about um, did you, do you view local television news? And about 83% of respondents said that they did. And we also asked do they use local TV broadcasts, websites, and apps? And 71% said that they did. Um, we found that in general television, as far as awareness, the bulk of the people that said that it was most important, what was most important in influencing their awareness was television. There wasn't even a close second. The number went higher for those that watched local television news and used the websites. So, you know, some advertisers might say, well, television news can skew older. And on other questions that you ask, I bet you they under indexed. And we don't find that. So that was a surprising. In fact, if they were most cases above the average. And I'll give you some example. So we asked, do you plan to increase your online uh, sports betting in the next 
six months. So general respondents, 47% said yes, they did. Um, but for those who watch local news, that number went up to 50% of them. And for those who use the websites, 55%. And we found that in other things like in-game sports betting, where two-thirds of respondents said that they did place an in-game sports bet, but that number went up to 69% for um, those who watch news, and even higher in the 70s for those uh, who um, use the w local news broadcast uh, w websites and apps. So that was very surprising. And it just shows the strength of those two and in fact, they did not skew that much older. They were they followed basically the pattern of the sports betters as far as age. It's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so from a broadcaster standpoint, what what should broadcasters kind of take away? Is there anything they can kind of put into practice around this space? Uh, well, they they should be going after the business, which they are, and uh, the FanDuel's and the DraftKings of the world should be going locally. Um, there's also, well, there were other, other very important findings that go more to the advertisers. So uh, we asked, would you be swayed by a competitive offer? And only about, I think it was 6% said they would not. So this means you always have to be out there advertising because it is so easy for you to lose somebody to uh, your competition. And even if they stay signed up with you, doesn't mean just because they, they have an account with you doesn't mean they're going to be using that account. So you constantly have to be out there advertising in order to maintain your share and, and get the frequency of usage. And people who bet, and we went out in the middle of January, and this was another surprising to me, but <laughs> I mean, you had 12% of the of, of our respondents who said they bet daily, and 27% who said they bet um, several times a week, and 27% who said they bet at, at least once a week. That means about two-thirds are betting really frequently. And that, that was a lot to me. Uh, I'm not a sports better myself, but uh, it seemed to me that you have a lot of frequent bettors out there. Yeah, that's a high level of engagement. That's, uh, that's really interesting. Um, so kind of pivoting and switching gears from sports betting, um, another area that I think you guys have done research on is how to reach the, the ad-free streamers, so these cord cutters that are going to these SVOD services or other services that, that don't have advertising. Um, so, so can you tell us a little bit more about that study and what you guys found there? All right, so we do a study yearly. It's called a media comparison study. It's a huge study. Um, actually, the sample base for it, it we've increased to 4,000 um, in the sample. And as a result, we asked them about the usage and we break it out to those who watch uh, programming on ad free platforms. So we know, and we could stick with the sports betters because we also ask questions about sports betters in that, s in that survey. So, out of, for example, the sports betters in that survey, about two thirds of them watch streaming programs without advertising. That's combining what they watch on TV and what they watch uh, on digital platforms because there's duplication between the two. It's two thirds. Now, advertisers can't reach them <laughs> on those platforms, but broadcast television by itself can reach them in the high 80s, and if you combine that with um, broadcast websites and apps, that number gets into the 90s. And we see that across the board, even for demographics within this study, if you take a look at um, broadcast TV and broadcast TV websites, and just so you're talking about broadcast assets, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's um, adults 18 plus, 25 to 54, Hispanic, upper income, they all are at least, they can reach for ad-free streamers at least 91%, in some cases even higher, and we look at it based on category also for automotive and all of those. The combination of the two can reach this audience, which is good news because there's no advertising on those platforms. So they can be reached just in another place and it's broadcast television. That's, uh, that's 
pretty high reach, right? To, to be able to get an audience that's growing in size on a, it seems like almost a daily basis. Um, and so you already talked about how these broadcasters can basically use their assets to, to reach these folks. Um, just any other research that's coming up from the TVB that we should have on our radar? As it relates to <laughs> we have a lot of we have we have a lot a lot of research we take a look at, at the purchase funnel study where we we went into uh, several different categories uh, from automotive to legal um, and also medical uh, urgent care and people go to doctor's office for eye doctors and we l take a look at their decision making process you know the purchase funnel starting from awareness and then going through several stages until they actually get to purchase. And visually what you could see on that chart, there's a, there's a deep blue and that blue is television. There is nothing that comes close to television as far as influencing the purchase decision. It is the most, according to our respondents, for each of these categories, it is the most important influence in every stage of the purchase cycle. And there's, you're talking about in the 40s, high 40s, and then the next one might be social media, and they had five or six percent. Wow. So, <laughs> it, it, and, and in many cases, for the awareness, the amount of people who selected television is higher than all the other platforms combined. It's a really powerful tool, and it helps establish to many advertisers who may not realize how powerful it is why they should be in television. So that's a great study, and then we break it out based on each of the different categories as well. All right, great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to share your insights with us today. We appreciate you uh, stopping by. It's great to be here.